Greetings and welcome to my channel. I am Nas and in today's episode I will be talking about something uh, unimportant. Well, not really unimportant but if compared to breathing and exercising it is not as important as that. But thing is, to be honest I got something to get off my chest. And this is something related to a certain character and not just a character, it is the protagonist in the GTA series and his name is Claude Speed so Claude Speed who is he what is he of course I will not ask when is he because that is not a valid question but then again another question is is he the same person that we know throughout the years and what is your opinion about it before we go further, let me remind you of the Grand Theft Auto timeline. So, this story will involve the characters from Grand Theft Auto 2 and Grand Theft Auto 3. However, we are going to begin with the game where the timeline is set earlier, which is Grand Theft Auto 3, which takes place in 2001, while GTA 2 is set in 2013 so that is why I will go with GTA 3 first a little backstory or maybe a lot of backstory about Claude from GTA 3 Claude is a character and little is known about his origins however it is believed that he was born in San Andreas it might be that he was born in San Fierro but that is up for speculation in the early 1990s, specifically 1992, he joins street racing in the countryside and in San Fierro. Uh, he made a name for himself. He made a name for himself in street racing. And during that same time, he eventually met a woman named Catalina, and Catalina would become his girlfriend. Thing is, what led to Catalina becoming his girlfriend is that. Catalina was upset with her then boyfriend uh, Carl Johnson, also known as CJ, and Carl Johnson challenged Claude and a few others to a race, and ultimately CJ won the race. As a result of CJ winning, Claude has to let go of his garage in San Fierro. Yes, Claude has a garage in San Fierro and he let it go. And after the loss, Claude brought Catalina or maybe both of them went to Liberty City. It is not exactly known when they departed to Liberty City, but some sources say that immediately in 1992, the same year, they fled to Liberty City. But that is also up for speculation. Fast forward 9 years later, we are at Liberty City, specifically Liberty City Bank. Claude was part of a robbery with Catalina and another person. However, Claude was double crossed. Catalina shot Claude somewhere, which uh, some people say in the throat, which led to Claude not being able to speak. However, that is also up for speculation. But one thing for sure is that Claude will go for revenge after that betrayal. Claude worked with a few shady characters in Liberty City, starting off at Portland, where he met 8-Ball. Technically, he met 8-Ball in the SWAT van because both were supposed to go to jail, but a certain incident led to them running away from the cops. Claude was introduced by 8-Ball to a person named Luigi Gattarelli, and it turns out later that Luigi is a member of the Leon crime family, or specifically the Mafia of Liberty City and Portland. And thing is, Luigi would uh, give some work for Claude, and somewhere down the line, Claude would be introduced to Joey, Joey Leon, who is the son of the Don of the Mafia family. And so, from there on, the plot thickens. In his quest for vengeance, Claude carries on working for the Mafia for a while, eventually working with the capo regime named Tony Cipriani, 
and uh, there was a time when Claude was tasked with sending Luigi, Joey, and Tony to Salvatore's meeting. They were ambushed by a gang of triads, but they successfully made it to the Don's house. And Claude is introduced to another person, and this time is the highest ranking in the Leon crime family, Salvatore Leon himself. And Salvatore Leon needs Claude to, to do his dirty work. And this dirty work is uh, something like blowing up a boat uh, full of drugs. And so with help from 8-Ball, Claude managed to do it. Claude was supposed to be a made man or something. Well, that was what Salvatore said. But unfortunately, what Claude received was another ambush. But this time, it was by Salvatore himself. However, the ambush did not happen because Claude was messaged by Maria, who told him to meet her um, somewhere at, uh, in near Callahan Point. And so, Claude with Maria and Asuka fled from Portland and went to into Staunton Island. From Staunton Island, Claude continued his revenge, but this time his focus is shifted a little bit towards killing Salvatore Leon. This is revenge for the ambush. That didn't really happen, but still, he's upset about it. Although he doesn't really show, but he is a bit upset. So, Salvatore was killed outside Luigi's club and later Cloud also took care of some high-ranking Mafia members. Asuka will introduce Claude to many other people like his brother Kenji and then Ray Machowski. Ray Machowski is a band cop. He requested Claude's help uh, and Claude had to kill uh, another band cop, Leon McCaffrey, who was a few years back he was Ray Machowski's uh, partner in the police force. And um, later on, Ray Machowski had, uh, told Claude to get rid of some disturbing evidence from a certain news source. And this disturbing evidence is uh, belonging to some high positioned media guy. And this high positioned media guy is later known as Donald Love. Donald Love is the owner of the Love Media conglomerate. He is really a high-ranking guy in Liberty City. He's like almost a mayor uh, over there. And with Love Media under his control and stuff, etc. Et but that is for another time. Claude was given jobs which also involve him betraying his former employers. Say. For example, the assassination of Kenji Kaysen where Donald told Claude to disguise as a Colombian cartel to kill the Yakuza Kenji as a means to provoke a gang war between the Colombian cartel and the Yakuza in Liberty City. That worked to Donald's favor. The Yakuza did not know that Claude killed Kenji, so they, were ob they remained oblivious to the fact. In one of the missions, Claude would come face to face with Catalina and her new partner Miguel. Unfortunately, Catalina managed to escape. Still, Miguel was captured. He did not make it because he was shot by Catalina. And, and Asuka began to torture Miguel, believing that Miguel killed Kenji. Claude continued to run errands for Asuka, and most of the errands involved causing disturbance, causing disruptions to the actions, the activities of the Colombian cartel and Catalina. In one of these missions, Claude came back to, to meet Asuka, but Asuka was already dead by then, and Miguel too. Maria was nowhere to be found. Maria was then revealed to have been kidnapped and held for ransom by Catalina. The ransom is around $500,000 
Claude prepared the money and went on to a mansion in Cedar Grove, where Catalina was waiting. Claude was tricked again by Catalina. However, this time Claude managed to escape from the cartels and track down Catalina. Catalina was flying on a helicopter, but Claude managed to track her down. Apparently, she landed somewhere in Cochrane Dam. At the dam, Claude went into an all-out war with a dozen or so Colombian cartel gang members. And eventually, Claude shut down and took down Catalina. And the rest is history. So, Claude's revenge arc was complete. At the end, Claude and Maria walked through the dam area and there was a gunshot heard in the credits of GTA 3. It is implied that Claude shot the weapon to tell Maria to shut up because Maria talks too much. But there is also speculation that Claude actually shot and killed Maria because Claude does not want to be betrayed again. But then again, all of this is mere speculation. Nobody knows except for Rockstar. According to Rockstar Games, the gunshot sound in the credits of GTA 3 is actually a sound glitch. But then again, it is also up for interpretation, but we take Rockstar's word for it. Now let's look at Claude Speed from GTA 2. Claude Speed was having a walk somewhere in Anywhere City when suddenly he was chased down by a dozen or so gang members or maybe people who look like gang members but I am not really sure who they are. One of them was wielding a chainsaw for God's sake and Claude really had to run away from them. Claude eventually found a van and hijacked the van. However, the the hijacked driver of the van gave a call to one of his friends who turned out to be the Zaibatsu. Claude was tracked down by means of the drugs inside the van. Claude took the drugs into a different vehicle, uh, into a black BMW and went off with the drugs. However, the Zaibatsu was still able to track him down. In fact, the Zaibatsu hired an assassin to take down Claude. Claude would spray paint the black car into white and then visited one of the crime bosses in Anywhere City. The crime boss congratulated Claude and gave him another job and this other job requires him to transport his gang members to ambush a party held by the rednecks in town. And so Claude duly obeyed his boss and sent the boys to the club where Elvis was seen uh, performing or maybe uh, somebody who looks like Elvis, I'm not really sure. But the thing is, Claude does not only work for one person, he works for many other crime bosses in Anywhere City. There was also a scene where Claude took a job from the Yakuza boss and the job required Claude to rescue a Yakuza member who was being kidnapped in a van. Claude sent the kidnapped prisoner back to the Yakuza and was congratulated by the Yakuza themselves. Anyway, back to the event, the job where Claude had to send some guys to, the, to invade the party. Claude just sent those guys and left them to do their job they were having a war outside the club, inside and outside the club, and Claude just went off. While Claude went off, he was not suspecting of a certain assassin behind him. The assassin shot two times with a silenced gun, and Claude was left helpless on the ground. It is implied that Claude died from the gunshot wounds, but that is another speculation up for interpretation. I am not really sure if the GTA 2 movie is canonical or not. If it is canonical, 
therefore Cloud Speed is officially dead. But then again, it is just a movie and we do not really know if he really died or not. Based on the observation from both Claude's from GTA 3 and GTA 2, here are some of my takes. There lies the question, are they the same person? Is Claude from GTA 3 the same person as Claude Speed from GTA 2? I have a few answers for that question. However, in my opinion, if I say the answer is yes, it is down to a few factors. First factor is that it is possible that Claude Speed managed to maintain his good looks even though he is uh, already 42 by the time of the events in GTA 2. Thing is, uh, he is probably around 20 something early 20s or maybe a late teens in GTA San Andreas and then we move forward to GTA 3 where he is probably near 30 by, by then it is impossible that he is older than that but he could be younger but then again I believe that if it is the same person then Claude Speed would be around 40 in GTA 2 it could be true, but then again, like I said before many times, it is also up for speculation. Another reason I give is that the character in GTA 3 is loosely based on Cloud Speed from GTA 2. To be honest, we do not know that the character in GTA 3 is named Cloud. Back when, uh, before GTA San Andreas, we do not know his name was Claude. It was only after Catalina mentioned his name that we know that uh, he, Claude is his name. But before that, around 2001, when the game first came out, it was never revealed. And uh, since the character in GTA 3 is loosely based on GTA 2's uh, character, the one in the movie of course, it could be reason that they might be the same person. It is leaning towards that. I ho I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but it could be a, uh, the, the closer to the truth. My second answer, whether or not they are the same person, my second answer is no. Unsurprisingly, I have two answers for this single question. Well, this is not how I answer my exams, but let's treat this like a forum. That is how I treat this discussion at least. And for my discussion, I say no because of a few reasons. One of the reasons is that it could be that they are, after all, different individuals. Because um, some might say that Cloud Speed looks very young to be 40 or you know pushing 40. He might be younger than that. So that is one reason. But besides that, I don't have any other reason to support this uh, answer. Based on that, it can be said that <laughs> my first answer is correct. But to be honest, we will not really know the actual answer for that question, whether or not they are the same person, who nobody knows. Only Rockstar knows, maybe Rockstar knows, but then again, I don't know if they will answer that question because it's been like almost 20 years, or maybe more than 20 years for both GTA 2 and 3, no offense. So what is the conclusion from this discussion? Well, to tell you the truth, Nobody knows the whole tr truth about it, not even myself. I do not claim to know anything other than speculation. What I was telling you guys is mostly speculation. Not all of it is correct. However, let's consider this as a theory. The theory that Claude and Claude Speed are the same person. A theory that is still up for interpretation even after 20 or so years. Meanwhile, that is the end of the video discussion for today. I am quite lost for words. Actually, I am I'm having a sore throat right now as we speak, but uh, no matter, I'll be fine.
but you i beat you thank you for listening uh, or watching and goodbye have a nice day and stay safe during these days what is your opinion about this subject please tell me in the comments below thank you and goodbye